a fantastic adventure to the frontiers of the unknown. Mission Stardust. Lang Jeffries, commander of the ship that dared to invade a forbidden world. Look over there. Tell me I'm dreaming. But who built a thing that size? We haven't even got a motor. It could make that monstrosity fly. But that craft wasn't built on Earth, Mike. Meet man-like creatures with super intelligence, armed with an incredible arsenal of weapons. Essie uh. Person, the seductress of Aya Woman, and the beautiful and bewitching visitor from a planet far beyond the galaxy. Activated energy? It's a gravitational neutralizer. Any material at which it's beamed loses its weight. Cora, stop playing with human lives and bring them down. You dare to order me around, Major? Mission Stardust, an odyssey into the infinite, with all its mysteries and unknown dangers. The limitless range of deep space, where a billion worlds move in timeless orbits. A fantastic tale of tomorrow told today, the cinematic adventure of a lifetime.
There. That's where the ship will land. In the area of Newcomb Crater. As usual, the flight pattern will be remote controlled from the command center on Earth under the ALO system. What exactly is the aim of this moon flight, Mr. Morland? Exploration of the areas around the Newcomb Crater and the Nubium Sea. A most difficult and dangerous task and one of extreme importance. How did you choose the crew for this flight, Mr. Morland? They were selected on the basis of experience and of compatibility. Projection? Major Perry Roden, the command pilot of the Stardust program. A former NASA astronaut who's logged more flying hours in space than any other pilot. Apart from this, Roden has already made two flights to the moon and commanded the recent and highly successful Mars reconnaissance team. Next, we have Captain Bull, who's second in command in the operation. He's a specialist in astral propellants. Here we have Captain Faber. He's an authority of many years standing in the radio and laser telecommunications field. And Dr. Minoli, who will be team medic. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I've managed to convey the essential points of the Stardust flight to you. What essential points, Mr. Moreland? Sorry, sir, but I've told you all I know. Just a second. Yes, Moreland. You know, I'm certain he's been holding back on the reason behind this Stardust thing. Yeah, he's like the goose with a golden egg, huh? Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Well, control tells me the countdown's begun. The liftoff's in 38 minutes. All three stages are fueled. Computer readings are constant at D411. How do you read, Roden? All Eight, systems are go. Seven. Then I'll say six, good luck. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. zero. Congratulations. We seem to have had a perfect liftoff again, Michaels. Thank you, sir. Let's hope the rest of the flight is as smooth. For the moment, my main worry is to keep the real reason for this flight well and truly secret. I must admit our space program has always fascinated me. But this Stardust flight I find particularly interesting. I have something here you might enjoy listening to soon. Yes. A tape recording of a, a closed meeting of Intercosmos. Why is that so interesting? Because it explains the real reason behind Stardust. Let's hear it. About six months ago, we took samples of rock from the Newcomb Crater using a robot drill. We know that, Professor. Just give us the facts. To put it briefly, these samples indicate that under the fine porous surface of the crater, there exists small deposits of an almost pure metal, which has an atomic density much greater than either cobalt or lithium. If our supposition is correct, then this metal is incredibly valuable. In fact, beyond value. But you must have had some idea of this, Mr. Arkin. I admit I had heard a rumor. We must keep our ears open for the reports on it. And then, Mr. Arkin? If they find it, we'll take it. But what about transportation? The moon's a long way. <laughs> That's just a matter of organization. Ferguson? The Coast Guards. They searched the San Lorenzo and found the drugs. They were paid for. Don't worry. But the captain and the crew, they'll try to make a deal. You're afraid the men are going to talk? Yes, sir. They know enough to break us wide open. You'd better inform Sector 9, an explosion in the engine room. None of the hands are to reach port. Right, sir. It is done, sir. <laughs> Good girl. Nicely manicured.
What does the computer say, Flipper? Our orbital entry is in 48 seconds. Retros are armed. Angle of incidence exact. Good. All right. Restore your respiration pill. And put your helmets on. Stardust calling command center. Command center to Stardust. Reading you loud and clear. Stardust ready for landing phase. Roger, Stardust. We're beginning the retro countdown. Now. Completion of first retro phase. How'd it feel? <laughs> no worse than a fist in the stomach. The remote system has you riding an elliptical pole-to-pole -pole orbit. Exact. We're over the top pole. What the hell is going on? Computer must have gone crazy. Both the automatic line boosters are gone. All right, stay calm. Gyroscopic stabilizer. Hey, baby, fair deal, huh? I didn't go and buy that return ticket for nothing. transmitters. Can we get a bearing on their position? No. Not till we hear from them. They have a radio in the exploration vehicle, haven't they? Yes, if there's anyone left alive to work the thing. That's right. All the electrical equipment should function perfectly well, but for some reason it doesn't. I've got a feeling that burst of interference was a little too coincidental. You saying there's a chance it was deliberate? Well, it's only a hunch, but we must try and find out. I've done some calculating, and I think I've discovered where it came from. Not far from here? Yeah, and it's on the side facing the Earth. We'll try contacting control from there. We'll keep in touch with you every two hours. Let's go, Mike. I was in her lap right now. Okay, let's try the radio. Put up a parabolic antenna. It's ready. 
Stardust to control center. Stardust to control center. Do you read me? Over. Look, Perry. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. What was it? I don't know, but the radio's gone. Perry, I'm beginning to feel unwanted. You know that? But it seems impossible there could be anyone here. Want some more good news? The motor? Wiped out. Let's get out of here. fly. But that craft wasn't built on Earth, Mike. It's pretty eerie, isn't it? I'd prefer a 12-headed, six-eyed, eight-foot monster to this blasted silence. Well, I'm quite sure we're being watched, so it isn't likely to. What's the matter? You lost your mind? No, I just... Follow me. an elevator, eh, Perry? And up we go to paradise or possibly hell. You can take off your helmets. The atmosphere in here is quite safe to breathe. Certainly better than inside this goldfish bowl. Why don't you take yours off, or do you need different air? Our friend's only a robot. Exactly. Please come in. There's no need to be afraid. Panda Nanako. Well, now, I suppose you two will unscrew your heads and go hide in the closet. I can understand your resentment, but we always use robots when we first come in contact with other races, since we cannot presume what their reactions will be. 
Yours was an aggressive attitude, typical of primitive races. Primitive? Us? But you're the one that committed the act of aggression, remember? We simply took over the control of your space vehicle. You were not in any danger. We only took a few defensive measures, Major Roden. How do you know my name? We intercepted your radio messages. It is necessary to be cautious when you find yourself, as we do, in a strange solar system, especially if it's inhabited. Where do you come from? From Archon. It's a planet 34 million light years away. 34 million? My name is Cress, and this is Thora, the commander of our spaceship. You speak our language perfectly. A breakdown has kept us here for five or six of your months, during which we've been able to analyze and learn many of your languages. It wasn't hard to learn the babble of savages. I see. With all your science, though, you still haven't been able to repair your spaceship. Unfortunately, a crash damaged the section containing the robot repairmen. Chris cannot do anything about it just now. Because he is very ill. He gets weaker every day. Don't you have a doctor on board with you? We've never had a need for that word. Our race managed centuries ago to conquer all known diseases. Illness is unknown on Arkham. Listen, we rough and ready cavemen have a doctor with us. Perhaps he can help Crest. Apparently, our species are similar. Only apparently. Among our inferior race, the male usually treats a female with respect. But as for you... Please, Thora didn't mean to offend you. I appreciate your offer very much indeed. Then let us out of here, and we'll come back in a few hours with the doctor. We can get him here within seconds. Nothing? Nothing. I've tried all four. It's as if a pair of them were swallowed up in a... Hey, listen. What is it? Hey, the ship's moving. Mr. Arkin. So the mission failed. It's a pity about the advance you paid your man. That means nothing. My dear Cedric, you're forgetting a most important factor. And that is? Rodent. Our friend is famous for getting himself out of the worst difficulties. <laughs> Here. Thank you, sir. Just keep your ears open. Yes, sir. Do you know this illness? Yep. It's a blood disease. The medical name for it is leukemia. It's serious, isn't it? Extremely. Are you certain? I don't believe our organisms are the same. They are, though. Medically speaking, they're identical. It's just that genetically, you're more ancient. And therefore, Weaker, more degenerate. It isn't an attractive expression, but that's just about it. I won't tolerate such libelous insults. You and your ridiculous race are... Stop provoking him. Yes, Doctor, you hit on the most serious problem of my race. Our civilization has lasted more than 10,000 years. Genetically, we're used up. Doc? Is there anything we can do for Crest? Possibly. An English doctor called Haggard has developed a leukemia serum. Can we get a hold of it? There's only one supply. Haggard is still experimenting with it. So we'd have to go to him. Where? He runs a hospital in Mombasa, East Africa. Crest, how'd you like to visit our planet? I would very much like to visit your planet. We must let him rest. He's weak. Very weak. Just that genetically, medically speaking, you're more ancient. Could I have a word with you? 
Come with me. I have a question. Why did you enter our solar system? Crest is one of the last great scientists left on Arkham. We're working together to save our race from extinction. You've tackled a tough job. How do you expect to stop the natural process of evolution? By uniting with a younger race. You wouldn't by chance care to start right away. No, Major Roden, your race is not at all suitable. Intellectually, you're too inferior. By our rating, you have only reached the fourth stage of development. And you? The ninth. Well, tell me, at the ninth level of development, what happens when a man and a woman are together in a bedroom? I don't understand. I'm only putting on my flight suit. Oh. Are you saying that a naked girl is of interest to a man? More or less. Uh, I'm content in the fourth stage. But we can talk about that later. The most important thing right now is to get Crest to Earth as quickly as possible. The sooner we find Dr. Haggard and his serum, the better. I'll think about it. But there's no time for that. Crest disease is serious. If you release my spaceship, we can leave right away. I'm certainly not prepared to travel in your tin can. Well, if nothing else, it works, unlike your highly developed vehicle. We have a standby. I'm afraid it only does the speed of light. But that's better than your wash tub. Why don't you stop putting on airs and look at me when I talk to you? How dare you! That's a very primitive act. Well, I'm only at stage four. I can slip to stage three very easily. I know you're computerized, but I'm willing to play. Let's see uh, how brave you are. I win. Three aces. Uh-oh. That's not fair. But you use x-rays to pick out my cards. Mike, I hate to break up your game, but we're leaving for Earth as soon as possible. Then why don't I try and get in touch with Control and warn them that we're on our way? We don't warn anybody. We use the emergency vehicle from this ship and land in a deserted part of Africa, incognito. Why? Why? Because the Arcanites are centuries ahead of us in technology. You know what that means? Certainly. Whoever gets hold of that knowledge could dominate the entire Earth. Exactly. That's why it's our duty to protect them and their spaceship. Let's go. So we make the most sensational discovery of all time, and we can't tell anybody. It's crazy. If we're inquisitive. Go ahead. You wouldn't understand the principles involved anyway. That's right. For example, we would never understand that this is a gravitational neutralizer. And that controls a magnetic anti-meteorite field. And this one is for... Um... Comparative fall. Your eyes are very quick, just like your hands. Thank you. Now I think you'd better put your superior intelligence to work and figure out a way to block out the radar net around the Earth. In about one second, we're going to be starting on the screens. Do you really think so?
Hey, have a look at this. What's happening? I don't know. I've never seen anything like this before. Sure it's not stardust? Absolutely, sir. All the radar controllers from Greenland to the Antarctic report the same disturbance. What the devil's going on? Let's get near. <laughs> Those robots are great tailors. But they haven't got a clue how to put buttons on. How do you feel? Much better, thank you. The air here is very invigorating. Where are we? Oh, in the desert about 400 miles from Mombasa. Only it's not deserted, Perry. Over there. Damn, it's a military vehicle. That means trouble. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. What are you going to do? They won't bother us. Stay where you are, Major Roden, and don't interfere. I make the decisions here. You had better understand that. You crazy idiot. Breaking like that? I didn't, sir. Driver, back it up. Get ready to fire. Come on, turn this thing around. What's the new trick? 
The ship is surrounded with a highly active field of energy, which is completely impenetrable. They only have a machine gun now, but they could come back with something heavier. Nothing on this earth of yours could possibly break that field of energy, not even the heaviest of guns. I think I'll have to teach them a lesson. And don't tell me to be patient with those children, Major. Because patience is not a virtue for me. Activated energy? It's a gravitational neutralizer. Any material at which it's beamed loses its weight. The vehicle is pushed backwards by the recoil of the machine gun fire. Doris, stop playing with human lives and bring them down. You dare to order me around, Major? Order. Wanda Mokodua. It isn't necessary to jeopardize human lives. Thor is disturbed. Why? Because we've been discovered? Perhaps. But I don't think it was that. Busy in Central Park over the weekend. Yeah, we might just as well land near Mombasa. The important thing now is to keep it secret. We need Dr. Haggard. Well, let's push on. Isn't it better to move at night? Yeah, Flipper's right. At least we'll have the advantage of surprise. Come on. We haven't got all day. Get in. Hurry up. Let's get the hell out of here. Is it news about Rodan? Yeah. You might say. But it's more than that. Right here in this message, there's a way to bring the world within our grasp. Philip. Yes, sir. Advise the African sectors to collect at the rendezvous in Mombasa. Phone through to the Mombasa office. I'd like to speak to Wayne. And in ten minutes, I'll want the Cessna. Yes, Mr. Ark. Business in East Africa is looking up. It means the next 48 hours will without any doubt be the crucial point of my career. I have yet to hear a more infantile piece of balderdash. You'll be cashier or discharge as a lunatic, you hear? But, General, Captain... That's true that the African Federation Army is run on discipline, not on jokes. Yes, sir. But this isn't a joke, sir. You're damn right it isn't, Captain. Excuse me, sir. A report has just been received at air control. An object has been sighted in the Serengeti. They say it's about 50 miles east of the Rift Valley. Alert Company C, Lieutenant. I'm going to take a look at this object. We're going to pull them out of there and put them under arrest. It's no use, General. You won't get near it, sir. I... I tried to tell you before, the bullets we fired... Don't say it again! You're talking sheer nonsense. There is nothing either terrestrial or extraterrestrial that can stand the blast from one of my 188 millimeter shells. During the night, we'll land here on the coast five miles from Mombasa. You can leave Mike and I and return here with the ship. And how do we meet up again after we've got Dr. Haggard? On the moon, you picked up the Stardust and brought it alongside your ship. Can you do that with us? The device I used to lift Stardust is too large for this vehicle. We only have one on the mothership. Hmm, too bad. Haggard will need his instruments for the operation. Well, we'll have to get a car. And you can pick us up here in the rain swamps. <laughs>
the first hitch. Which is? We'll never be able to buy a car. We need money to do that. That's right. And we don't have it. Silly, isn't it? Here we are, highly paid astronauts without a penny in our pocket. You can tell this. It's a very rare element called Fenia. Fenia? What's that in English? Common mercury. You mean you couldn't exchange this for one of those cars you've been talking about? The most you'd get would be a couple of small medical thermometers. Flora, what substance is this? Oh, that's nothing. We use that for bolts, for washers, and riveting pots together. You call it, uh, carbon? Oh, boy. Hmm? On Earth, we have another name for crystallized carbon. What is it? Diamond. I'll be darned. Uh, do you happen to have any spare washers and bolts lying around? Those are rejects. If they amuse you, you can have them. Perry, Thora, there's a helicopter coming. Now, Thora. I shall be nice to them, so don't worry. You think you're taking me on a tour of the country? Fly straight up the valley, Major. But the invisible wall, sir. Good Lord, don't say you believe in that rubbish. No, sir. The controls don't respond, sir. And the motor's cut out. Well, I order you to restart the motor. It's amazing, sir. We should have crashed. <laughs> There'll be a perfectly logical explanation for that. But as for this motor breakdown, a board of inquiry will decide on your irresponsibility. I am General Roan, the Commander-in-Chief of the African Federation Forces. I want to talk to the commanding officer of this object. You are. A woman's in command here? I've never heard of anything in the world so ridiculously absurd. You are referring to this world, but I, General, come from another. Now that's something we'll see about. The fact remains that you and your machine are trespassing on territory that comes under the jurisdiction of my command. I landed, General Rune, on the third planet in this very small constellation, which according to our map is numbered 11620. I couldn't care less about that. You are here illegally, you and your war machine. This is beginning to get interesting. We're at war, is that it, General? Well, I wouldn't say that. Though you'd better understand that I'm placing you under arrest. You'll have to come back to headquarters. You are inside an activated wall of energy. There is literally no way through it. So I advise you to be careful. That could be interpreted as a declaration of hostilities. Interpreted as you wish. Then I take it that you refuse to cooperate. I refuse, yes. You agree to leave me alone, and you can go, General. I won't tolerate this! If you force the issue, I'll bring in artillery. That's not very friendly. You'd better give up. My troops are here, already prepared for action. Did you put them in the mountains as well, General? No, there are no troops there. Well, then, you go back and watch those mountains. I see trouble brewing. I think you should have talked to him instead. Maybe, but we don't want them to know we're on board. Hey, what kind of stunt are you going to pull now? Just a little demonstration to show the general what I can do. So 
their retreat. They seem to be crystallizing. <laughs> they are. It's just a molecular alteration. Hmm. So simple, isn't it? Hmm. Gentlemen. I think the time has come for us to call an emergency meeting of the general staff. to see you again, sir. How are things progressing, Lonnie? We've carried out all your instructions, Mr. Arkin, and I've got the teams ready and standing by for further orders. Good. We'll just wait now for our friends to act. So far, they haven't done anything. They're still sitting out there in the Serengeti, surrounded by General Rune's troops. Hmm. Rune's obviously under the illusion he's going to capture the ship. As soon as we get our hands on it, we'll begin the extermination of his entire force. <laughs> if only he knew. Lonnie. <laughs> The spaceship, it took off a few minutes ago and disappeared. Magnificent. They'll be flying right into our trap. Take this. What is it? A security device. This first control encloses you in a bubble of energy. It'll protect only your person. The second is a gravitational neutralizer, which you've seen in operation. And the third button, if you press that, you'll be able to contact me on this television screen. No playthings for me. And this is an automatic direction finder. If you're really in a fix, press this button. It'll localize your position and I'll come and get you. I must be out of my mind to trust you with these things. Why do you give them to me then? Uh, well, it's just that I wouldn't want you not to return safely. For Chris's sake, of course. Oh, yeah. Why else, Perry? Well, for the present, sir, the situation is under control. But General Rune, just a few minutes ago, that spaceship took off an unknown destination. I know, sir, but it returned almost immediately. So they can come and go as they please, huh? For the moment, yes, sir. 
but I'm studying their defense. There has to be a weak point somewhere. And the minute I discover it, I'll... It's for you, sir. Thank you, Mitchell. Yes, hello? Very well, thank you. Now we know what happened when our friends made that short trip in their spaceship. It came down near Mombasa. Two men were landed from it, and then it took off again. This is the chance we wanted. With all roads in the area blocked, we can check out every suspicious move that's made. Leave it to me. Our friends won't last long. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You don't smoke, so you wouldn't understand. But I hadn't touched a cigarette for three days. It's painful. Hey, Bella. Uh, maybe you'd like to make a real big deal. All right. Just one cigarette or a diamond. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. But your ancestors cheated mine, you know, trading with little bits of colored glass. And there's no reason you're any different. If you want to buy something, then let's see the color of your money. My friend is only joking. <laughs> Do a thing like that again and we'll never get haggard. Sir, may I have a word with you? I see you're strangers. May I be of any assistance? No, thanks. Would you like to have some fun, huh? I have some very young girls, very young, ashish. Whatever you want, whenever you want. How about an automobile? But of course, I will take you to Saruman. He will help you. Follow me, follow me. Please, sir, just wait one moment. Barry, this is serious fun. Good morning, sir. My friend tells me you are interested in buying an automobile. How much for the Land Rover? Oh, you have impeccable taste, sir. With one glance, you have chosen the best vehicle I have. It's hedgerow, practically new. Look at the tires and the bodywork. The motor is a precision instrument. Look, we're in a hurry. How much? Well, uh, really, I don't know whether to sell it or to keep it for myself. It's such a perfect machine. Well, I wouldn't want to break your heart by taking it away. Come on. Uh, one moment. As a favor to a friend. All right. I'll sell it to you. How much? One and a half thousands, the price to you. Dollars? Oh, no. It's perfect. <laughs> we'll find another. Twelve hundred. Eight. A thousand. Now we can talk. This will ruin me. Well, you can make it up if you'll exchange it for some diamonds. First, I'd have to... S it requires expert examination. This way, please. from the others. Now, uh, please make yourselves comfortable. As you can see, it's worth more than a thousand pounds. Yes, it's not bad. But this is not the same diamond that you showed me before. That one was bigger. I'm very hurt that you tried to take me in, gentlemen. Well, let me see the others. You heard him, the diamonds. Where are they, Mac? Okay, okay. Uh. 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 
It's two against three, fair. Darn right. Come on. He was mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Right here. Pretty good. Stage four certainly has a lot of advantages, but a combination... Look out. failed on it. Hmm. I, gentlemen, gentlemen, I apologize. I trust you're not going to hurt me. I ask you for your mercy. Tell me if there's anything I can do for you. We just want you to buy that diamond for an honest price. Of course, sir, certainly, certainly. Um, I offer you, uh, let me see, uh, the Land Rover and uh, 500 pounds. Excuse me. Yes, of course. One more thing. Where can I find Dr. Haggard's institute? This road, just two miles north of the town. Hmm. Just a minute. Ah, money's my religion. Excuse me. I was told Dr. Haggard was here. Can I help? I'm his assistant, Dr. Sheridan. Oh, sorry, but I have to speak to the doctor personally. He's in his laboratory. You'll find it over there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, doctor. Uh, what disease put me into the hospital under your care? Uh, galloping malaria. Dr. Haggard? Yes? I hate to interrupt you while you're working. Well, this is a rather delicate and important experiment. I'm preparing my afternoon tea, however. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm Major Roden. This is Captain Bull. Roden? That name somehow is very familiar. And so is the face. Major Roden, the Stardust. Are you related in any way to the famous astronaut? I am the astronaut. Oh, oh come on now, I've just heard the news on the radio. The Stardust and her crew of four have disappeared somewhere on the other side of the moon. Officially, that's the story, but in reality, we're here. You must agree that it's not very easy to believe in a, a reality that's so fantastic. I think you'd better prepare yourself for a more fantastic story.
Cobra, calling Section 8. Do you read me? This is Section 8, Cobra, reading you loud and clear. Over. Here. What's your unit, Captain? This is a special unit. What's that? The word fantastic is inadequate for your story, Major Roden. A more applicable adjective is incredible. It is. But I can prove to you that it's true. What is it, Major? We're Dr. Haggers. Can you show him the patient? Of course. Thanks, Thor. Is everything okay? Perfect. I hope you've managed to convince Dr. Haggard to come. Yes. He's convinced. I'll go. Good. We'll leave right away and meet you at the spaceship. Have you got everything you'll want? Yes, everything I need is here. Tell us what we have to tell you. No, my assistants will see to everything. Send Dr. Sheridan and Nurse Silver into my laboratory, please. Do we have to take them? Dr. Manoli can help you. No, I'm sorry, Major. It's essential that I use assistants who know my technique in this operation. Some technique? Prepare a dose of anti-leukemia serum and pack all the equipment necessary for the operation. Major Roden and Captain Bull will help you load it into the car as soon as you're ready. Very well. I'm all yours, Doctor. They destroyed my office. The place is wrecked. Then they drove off in my best vehicle. And you don't have any way of knowing which way these strangers were heading? No. I wish I did. But you know... Wait a minute. They asked me the way to that institute of Dr. Haggard's. Calling Unit 16. Head out toward Dr. Haggard's Institute. Calling Unit 16. Thank you. You drive. I was only trying to figure out if they were twins. Let's get moving. some bandages and a lighter. Hey, what are you going to do now? I'm going to try and slow them up. Here, take this. When you're in the Savannah, contact Thor. All right, slow down. Are you out of your head? Slow down. Put on the brakes.
bits in a second. I'll call for help. But how long will it take us to get there? It's roughly 400 miles. About 10 seconds. Glad to see you've come round, Major Roden. Who are you? A friend. What do you want, friend? <laughs> what does this gadget do? Where'd you find it? Exactly where you dropped it. I've had you under close surveillance since you landed. Now then. What is this device? It's a transistor radio. I like to catch the latest news broadcast. And I can't stand to be without music. <laughs> Cedric, that's no way to greet a friend. So you don't want to help us, eh, Major? Not really. Why don't you turn it on? Perhaps we'll get some music. Or perhaps it'll blow up. Or perhaps you're afraid. <laughs> no, this isn't so important now. Because I'm about to take over your spaceship. I don't think you'll make it. <laughs> I know your Achilles heel. So you're wrong there, Major Roden. I'm well informed. By whom? <laughs> don't worry, you'll know in good time. I think you're only half informed. Why? That spaceship you want to take over is only a satellite of a much larger mothership on the moon. There's a garrison there waiting for their commander to come back from Earth. Now, if something should happen to her, the spaceship, they have orders to take off for the Earth and destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bluff, road. If that's what you want to think. I'll show you. You'll see with your own eyes the capture of your invulnerable spaceship. We're almost too late. Those police, darn him. If it wasn't for Perry, we'd never have gotten here. Did you have to leave him behind, though? There was simply no other way. Will you be operating? No, not yet. First, we must give him a transfusion. I need a breath of fresh air. It's suffocating in here. I'll be outside. Where's the anesthetic? I must have left it in the car. I'll get it. Do you need a hand? I don't, but 
Nurse Silvermine. She might have been. How's everything going? Not bad. The others should be arriving soon. And Manoli doesn't suspect? As long as it's only a transfusion, I think we'll be all right. The boss said that you'd give me all the details. What do I do? Get rid of that wall of energy. Then you've got to switch the interference signal on, because that'll let the men know the wall's down. And the others? When do you reckon they'll get here, Anne? That all depends. Joan and I will be waiting for your signal. What? When everything is ready, you say, when does the operation start, all right? Okay. You better go back now, and I wonder what's happened to you. So you see, my plan is perfect. Flipper. I can't believe it. <laughs> He's a great astronaut, but loses at poker. I paid all his debts, and... He's had his uses. How much further, Mr. Arkin? We're nearly there. <laughs> Goodbye, Rose. I think I feel better. His pulse is steady, Doctor. That's a result of the transfusion. When does the operation start? We'll begin now. Ready? Now our beautiful Arcanite is going to show us how to work a spaceship. That I'll never do. Listen, Crest will die if you refuse, Thora. You see, my dear, not in actual fact, Dr. Haggard. The real Haggard is in our safekeeping. All right. You cooperate now, and we'll take Crest to the doctor. This time it's for real. Well, we're waiting. That is what controls the flight computer. And this is the button that activates the alarm system. <laughs> <laughs> Connor! 
I can't. I'll kill you, you hellcat. What's going on? Two vehicles headed toward the ship, sir. They must have lifted the energy wall. Signal to attack! Wall of energy again. Cease fire! Cease fire! Cease fire! Ridiculous. We're as helpless as children. Snap out of it. Well, the return of the hero. You all right, Doc? Sure. Oh. What happened? Don't tell me it failed. Our plan was perfect. There's no time to explain now. We must get away fast. I brought the girl with me. <laughs> that was good thinking, Flipper. We can still do it, using her as a hostage. Come and get the girl. We'll hide out on the island.
They've taken Thor with them. It's amazing. A man like Haggard. I don't think it was really Haggard. Nor do I. I was very worried. As the How doctor. is he? That transfusion we gave saved his life. Crest? They've kidnapped Thor. Help me into the control no, room. You're not to move. Thor has a localizer. If she can use it, we'll find her. Present Dr. Haggard, the real one, that is. My dear, I'm afraid you've been tricked. That wasn't difficult, I can assure you. I'm sorry to be curious, but uh, I permitted myself an inspection of your very stylish belt and was wondering what the button controls. I'm sure you'd be happy to explain. I imagine that it's uh, one of your secret weapons. Is that right? Flipper says you have never used it in his presence. No. What about that button? Mr. Arkin, it'd be much easier to just take the chance and give it a push. No! You idiot! <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing happened. The signal. For a signal. She succeeded. Now the automatic reactor will find her. Can you assist me, Major? Let's get this thing off the ground. <laughs> You're being very stubborn. If you think that I'll pass information to a gorilla, Mr. Arkin, then you're wrong. I take that to mean you consider yourself superior. <laughs> I admit that what you're inferring is probably true. But uh, you are a beautiful woman, and I'm sure you'd hate to lose your looks prematurely. No man could justify such brutality. Remember, though, a gorilla has a perfect right to be brutal. You're the first people in the universe to whom we've entrusted our battle dress. We appreciate that trust. According to the indicator, she's there. Very good. Are you ready, Mike? Let us out. Emergency exit. Leave her alone. <laughs> Hold it. Doctor. We'd better find Arkin. Don't worry. Mr. Arkin's about to learn that nobody should make an enemy out of me. You coming with us, Doc?
That's the end of a lot of evil men. Rare. Is that so? Move over. Go on. Go on. That's better. How did he get here? With my belt and the magnetic teletransporter. <laughs> you made a terrible mistake in opposing Arkin, and you'll pay for it with your lives. Stay where you are. My patience is exhausted. The robot. While he's wearing the belt, it won't lay a finger on him. <laughs> it's amusing, isn't it? Now your weapons and superiority are against a piece of earthly antiquity, and they're useless. But there's one weapon that you can't fight. Don't! No, not here. It's simple, little old courage. Don't move! Or I'll kill you! You could shoot one of us, but one of the others would get you. Stay where you are. All of you. Why not make a partnership with me? We'd be masters of the universe. Cora, open the door. No, it's too late. It's a compression exit, and automatically opens to the outside. To the total void of space. well. Yes, I really feel much better. Lucky for me those crooks brought the right serum along. Hey, Earthlings, I've been stoking the boiler. All we need is a crew and we're in business. Please, come back soon. Why, well, sure. We'll be back as soon as we've collected the materials to repair your ship. You know, when I compare your scientific marvels to the Stardust, she reminds me of an old bicycle. <laughs> but you're right not to divulge your secrets, yeah? Dora's correct when she says we're too young. Ah, uh, and we're too old. You know, I'd like to see an old dream of mine come true, a union of our two races. When you go back to Archon, pick out a couple of girls just like Thora, and I'll volunteer for the experiment. <laughs> now, where's the chief? Barry? Boy, I hope you meant it. The experiment has begun.